Hey guys, your boy Mr. A and goal three. This is key concept six targets A, B, and C about rotations. This is part three of our packet for notes. Yeah, YouTube channel is at Mad Videos by Mr. A. Uh, make sure you subscribe so that way you know when new videos come out. Hit the notification button as well. Um, I'll be making videos for key concept six through key concept 14 for integrated math one core and honors. Example 1A, describe the rotation that maps the pre-image ABC to the image GRT. Okay, so we're told that the pre-image is triangle ABC, so I'm going to put a P here just for short, and which tells me the triangle to the right is going to be my image. Okay, we've also been told that it's been rotated, so we just need to figure out specifically what kind of rotation took place. This is where I would recommend um, using the patty paper. I would start by tracing the pre-image. So, Pretend that this dashed line is your patty paper. Okay, you're going to want to trace everything about it, including the arcs for the angles, the tick marks for the sides, the actual name of the corners, the vertices. Okay, then when you do a rotation, now it doesn't tell me which direction. Whenever a problem doesn't tell you which direction, we're going to assume automatically that's going to go counterclockwise. So it's going to go against the clock. The clock normally runs to the right. So counterclockwise is going to be to the left. So we're going to go ahead and take this, and we're going to want to rotate it in this direction, counterclockwise. Okay? Each time you return the paper, it's going to be 90 degrees. So if you turn it once, what you're going to do is you're going to want to place it on top of the image to see if the corners match up. Right? And specifically, not just any corner, but you want to make sure that the symbols match up. So Right here, you can see that there's two arcs. You want to end up with two arcs on top. So if we, again, we take the gray one, we take the patty paper, once you trace it, when you rotate it once 90 degrees, you're going to notice that it does not match up. When you rotate it twice, you're going to notice that all the symbols match up. So that means I had to rotate the patty paper two times, which means if each turn is 90, 90 plus 9 is going to give you 180. So we're looking at a rotation of 180 degrees counterclockwise. Example 2A, uh, triangle JAB is rotated about point O, complete the triangle congruent statement. So they tell us that JAB is the one that's been rotated. So JAB must be my pre-image. So on the picture itself on the graph, I could put a P here short for pre-image, which means this one's going to be I, your image. You can even tell, they tell you right here, like you can see that this triangle and then the arrow tells you it's been rotated to the right. Notice this time around, they didn't tell me specifically in words what direction they rotated. But when you look at the picture, you can tell that they rotated to the right, which is actually clockwise. Okay? So again, if you could do this by just looking at it, great. If you need the patty paper, what I would strongly suggest, make sure your patty paper covers the entire graph. Okay? And you want to make sure that it's flat with the bottom of the graph. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to trace your pre-image everything about it, the corners, also known as the vertices and the shape itself. You're gonna put your pencil on this point O, and according to this arrow, you're gonna rotate to the right. Notice it's only gonna take one turn, so it's gonna be a rotation 90 degrees clockwise. And you'll notice that J should land right on top of E. So since J was the first letter they decide to go with, J becomes E. They then went with A, which is gonna become D, and then they went with B, which when you turn it around again, when you rotate it, it's going to become R. So triangle jab is going to be congruent to triangle EDR. Remember, they already named the first one for us. When we name the second one, we can't just choose any combination of letters we want. We need to make sure that it matches up with congruent angles. Okay. Example three, draw and label the pre-image triangle ABC with vertices A at 1, negative 2. B at negative 2, negative 5, and C at 3, negative 5, and 1 color. Draw and label the image A prime, B prime, C prime after 180 degree rotation about A 
in a different color. So let's start with the first step they gave us. Okay, so we're gonna basically create the pre-image. We're gonna plot it on the actual graph. A we're told is at one negative two. B we're told is at negative two, negative five. Okay, and I forgot to label this A, and this is B. And then C we're told is at three, negative five. And we can go ahead and connect our points. Okay, so we accomplished the first step. The second step we're told is to draw and label the image in a different color after 180 degree rotation about A. So 180 degree rotation means we're gonna have to turn the patty paper twice. Each turn will be 90 degrees. Um, now, they don't tell us which direction, so we know that we're gonna have to do it counterclockwise, which means we're gonna have to go to the left. But when we flip the patty paper, we're gonna be going in this direction. And remember, we're gonna be flipping it two times for a 180 degree rotation. So this will be your patty paper. Again, make sure your patty paper covers the entire graph. I would start with the bottom. Make sure it lines up exactly with the end of the graph. And then make sure that it covers the entire graph. Now, we're going to trace the pre-image, A, B, C. I forgot to label this one C. And then we're going to go ahead and you're going to put your pencil on A, and you're going to rotate it counterclockwise to the left two times. Okay? You should end up with something that looks something like this. A should not move because that's where your pencil was. So that's just going to become A prime which is still the order pair one, negative two, okay? Your B should now be at four, positive one. You can go ahead and label that B prime. And you should notice that C prime is gonna be a negative one, one. So you go to that C prime, and that was the order pair negative one, comma one. Connect your points. And we're good there, okay? Each one in a different color. What I would recommend is doing it in pencil first. And once you're confident about your answers, then go ahead and redo it in two different colors like the directions say. Example four, given the pre-image triangle fun, draw the image with a horizontal translation of negative nine, a vertical translation of positive 10, and a 270 degree rotation about the origin, draw each transformation in a different color and label all points. Right? So, we already know which pre-image we have. We'll start with those ordered pairs. F is going to be at the ordered pair 3, negative 6. U is at 4, negative 2. And then N is at 5, negative 6. Okay. We're going to do each transformation in the exact order that they tell us. So draw the image with the horizontal translation of negative 9. Horizontal translation of nine, it tells us that we're gonna take each one of our corners, each one of our vertices, and we're gonna slide it to the left nine units. So we'll start with that. So starting with F, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That puts F prime right there, which is the order pair negative six, negative six. Going with U, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. U prime will go there, which is the order pair negative five, negative two. Next point is N. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That right here is gonna be N prime, which is gonna be the order pair negative four, negative six. Okay. I've used one prime because we've transformed it once. Now, the next thing, vertical translation of positive 10. So we're gonna take all the points that we just moved and now we're gonna move them up 10 units, starting with F. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Puts it right there. We'll go ahead and call that F double prime, which is the order pair negative six, positive four. Okay, U prime is right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then just one right above it, will be 10. Okay, we'll call that U double prime, which will be the order pair negative five, positive seven, no, negative five, positive eight. Okay, I didn't mean to go off the graph like that. Um, the next example that you guys have to do, it won't be like that. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it as it is because we're, we've already solved the half of it. 
And then N, if you move up, what is it? 10 units, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We'll be right here, we can call that N double prime, which is the order pair negative four, positive four. All right, and then we still gotta do one more thing. We're told that we wanna do a 270 degree rotation about the origin. They don't tell us which direction, so we can automatically assume that we're gonna have to go counterclockwise, so to the left. And then 270 is gonna be three turns of the patty paper because each turn is 90. 90 plus 90 plus 90, or three times 90 is gonna give us 270. So the first turn of the patty paper, um, well, let's see real quick. What we should've done first, what I should've mentioned was, you wanna start with your patty paper at the end of your graph, and you wanna make sure that it goes all the way around covering your last pre-image. Okay, and it says around the origin or about the origin. So the origin is right here. That's where you're gonna put your paper. So the first turn should bring it somewhere in this box right here, also known as quadrant three. Another turn, which would be 180, will bring it back somewhere into quadrant four. Another turn should bring it back into quadrant one, all right? F triple prime is gonna be at the point four comma positive six. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and call that F triple prime, the ordered pair four comma six. U prime is gonna end up again being a little bit out, so it's gonna be at eight, positive five, which will be somewhere right there. We'll call that U triple prime, ordered pair eight comma five. And then the last ordered pair will be for N triple prime, which is gonna be at four, four, label with triple prime, connect your dots. And there you would go, okay? Again, any future examples I give you, I'm gonna make sure that they actually fit on the graph and they fit on the patty paper. This time around, we had one that was a little bit out, but it still worked, okay? We started with the pre-image down here in quadrant four. Horizontal negative nine took us here, which we would call uh, the first image. Then a vertical translation of positive 10 took us to our second image, which was in quadrant two. And then finally the rotation brought us all the way over to quadrant one for our third image and final answer. For 5A, name all the possible width transformations that can map the pre-image to the image. Transformation is when you, when you change something, specifically shapes we're talking about here. What makes them rigid is that when they stay the same size and the same shape. Okay. You can look at the pre-image and the image, they're nicely labeled for us. You can tell that they're gonna be the same size and the same shape. So the only rigid transformations that we've studied are translations, reflections, and rotations. I need to figure out which one will take my pre-image to the image. Now, I can clearly see that they're like a mirror image, so it looks like a reflection. So if I were to take my pre-image and flip it over that line to the right, I could end up with my image. So we're gonna go ahead and write down reflection over the line. Well, they want us to list all possible transformations. So uh, I'm thinking translation. Could I take the pre-image, slide it to the right, and have it be right on top of each other at every possible point? And the answer would be no. So then I'm thinking maybe uh, rotation. I'm gonna have to give a point. I'm gonna use this, my point. I could probably rotate in any direction here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just go counterclockwise because they don't tell us. So I'm gonna go to the left. Okay, right? Left in the sense that if I keep turning this around, eventually it's gonna go counterclockwise against the clock. Um, one turn would probably bring me somewhere down here. Two turns would probably put me where the image is, so that's gonna be a rotation of 180 degrees counterclockwise. So out of the possible rigid transformations we had, the only ones that would work for this one is a reflection and the rotation. Example 6a, list and draw a path of transformations that can lead the pre-image to the image below. Determine whether the figures are congruent or not. Okay. They want us to list and draw possible transformations to go from one to the other. 
to the next. We don't need to list every single possible one. We just need to list one pet that we can follow. Now, notice the shapes, the geometric figures do not have any of the corners, any of the vertices labeled. So I cannot figure out which one is the pre-image that way because there's no prime. The problem itself also in the directions do not tell me which one the pre-image is. So I get to make that choice. Don't assume that the small plus sign is the pre-image because it's smaller to the left. In this example, we get to make the decision ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that the one on the left is my pre-image. So I'm gonna put a P here short for pre-image. Which means that the plus sign on the right is gonna be my image. I'm gonna put an I to let me to let me know that. Okay. Now, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, and there's there's multiple possible correct answers here. I'm just gonna show you one pet that would work or one that to me seems the most obvious. So I can tell that they're different sizes. So right away, I'm looking at the small one. I'm thinking, all right, I need to get that to become bigger like the one on the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a dilation, which basically means I'm gonna dilate, I'm gonna make it bigger in every possible direction until I end up with something that potentially looks a little bit like this, okay? Not precise, but whoever's grading this can look at it and be like, I understand what's happening here. So list and draw. I already drew it and I'm gonna list it. Dilation to make it bigger or dilation to increase the size. Okay. But notice my pre-image is still not right on top of my actual image. So again, we have a couple possibilities here. I'm gonna go with what seems uh, to me to be the most obvious, which is I'm gonna reflect it to the right. Now notice I can also do a translation. I can slide it to the right. And if I even wanted to, I could do a rotation around some point in the middle that would get me there, okay? I drew my line of reflection. Once I take the green plus sign and I flip it over, I should notice that it's gonna be right on top of the actual image. So my second step will be to say reflection over the line. Again, once you give me one pet, you don't need to give me every single possibility. You don't need to talk about translations or rotations here unless that's the pet that you decided to, right? So we did the first part. The last part says determine whether the figures are congruent or not and then explain. For two figures, for two shapes to be congruent, they need to be the same shape to begin with and then they need to be the same size. So looking at the small plus sign to the left and the bigger one on the right, I would argue that they definitely are the same shape. They're both plus signs. Now, the size, obviously there's a difference. The one on the left, the pre-image was much smaller. The image, the one on the right was much bigger. So they're not the same size. As soon as one of those two conditions is no longer met, automatically you can tell me that the two figures are not congruent. So that's what we'll say now. say they're not congruent and then the definition or not the definition but the explanation will be uh, they didn't meet the definition which the definition being that they have to be the same size and shape so because they are not the same size okay notice had they been the same size and the same shape I would have argued yes they are congruent and then explain because they are both the same shape and the same size. So just keep that in mind. 7a, label the vertices of the image of Pentagon SABGE using prime. List and draw a path how Pentagon SABGE can be transformed into prime using rigid motions, okay? So they tell us that this is the pre-image, okay? Which tells me that the one over here is my image. I just need to figure out a path and how do I get there. Okay. Again, there's there's multiple answers here. There's no one way. Uh, to me, I'm thinking the first thing I want to do is turn this so that I can actually get it to be facing downwards like the top one is. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna rotate it. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up a little bit here. I'm gonna rotate it to the right clockwise. Okay. So when I do that, I'm gonna use this point right here, V. And when I rotate it, I'm gonna end up with something that looks a little bit like that. Okay, this one will still be V, so I'll label it V prime. The one on the right will be G prime. Up top will be E prime to the left, S prime, and then A prime. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and list that. 
So I'll say a uh, 90 degree rotation. And this time I decided to go in the same direction as the clock. So 90 degree rotation clockwise. And then which point did I use? B. So I'll say about B. Okay. You'll notice we're still not right on top of each other. So then I'm going to go ahead and keep it simple for myself. I'm just going to follow it up with a horizontal translation to the right. And it should be right on top of each other which means this point to the upper left will be S double prime, E double prime, G double prime, V double prime, and A double prime. Okay, so then I'm gonna follow it with a horizontal translation to the right. We're done. For this one, we don't have to talk about whether or not they're congruent because the directions don't ask for that. 